Behold, the opening page that serves as the very face of privilege. Or what else would you call a comic that was created because of Amelia Clark's fame over a suitable writing ability? This is the infamous opening page of the infamous MOM Mother of Madness comic famously co-written by Amelia Clark. And as you can see, someone decided to desecrate the art by vomiting a Twitter thread all over the page. So let's check it out, shall we? Clapton Art Museum, New York City, March 2049. Hello there, my name is Maya Kuiper. I'm 29 years old, a single mom, a high school dropout, chemical engineer, part-time sex worker, typhoon junkie, and biological freak of nature. Scorpio and Blood Moon Rising. No drama, no water signs. I like Ruth Bader Ginsburg's speeches and Martha Stewart living. I enjoy more children's television shows than is probably healthy. I lie to myself every January about using the elliptical I bought four years ago for anything more than an expensive clothes hanger. I get anxiety from feeling like I don't listen to enough podcasts about controlling anxiety, and I made a pacifist run on Undertale for my first time through, including escaping the bullet hell. Thank you very much. I'm currently trapped smoozing in an Upper West Side corporate after party as part of my boss's entourage for a female empowerment in the workplace initiative. My last CFO had to step down after getting caught soliciting what turned out to be several thousand Mexican scorpions in a trench coat as part of a viral prank sensation. So here we are. And this... Now, before I'm taken away for exposing you to this war crime of a comic page, let's take a quick look at how much dialogue we can cut. There. That's right. It should probably come as no surprise that most of this shameful display, much like the writer, was completely useless. Panel 1's greeting is fine, and the introduction in the first word balloon in panel 2 is technically fine. Bubble 2 and 3, however, read like a quirky opening to a dating site. By Bubble 4, it's starting to become clear why she's single, since this is something she'd say on a date if she wanted a man to sneak off and attempt escape through the bathroom window. Bubble 5 reads like it came from the unstable mind of a psychopath. So this one might actually be pretty accurate. Who just bursts out things like this, unprompted in the middle of a crowd? Because if you notice, none of these are actually thought balloons or captions. These are good old-fashioned word balloons, which means technically speaking, Maya is standing in the middle of a crowded room reciting random facts about herself to absolutely no one. One might ask, what about the rest? Surely the information we get about the party she's at and the additional background we get count as viable dialogue options. Well, they might have been, were this a prose novel, but this is a comic book, a visual medium, and we can actually see that she's smoozing at a party. Remember the golden rule, show don't tell? That idea becomes even easier and more crucial in a comic. To put it simply, every piece of information we've cut is either meaningless fluff to make her feel more quirky or things we can actually see happening. I know the random facts are likely added on to speedrun her deranged personality, but Hypothetically speaking, if the rest of the book is written with even a basic level of competency, we should gradually learn everything we need to know about the character and plot as the story progresses. Better yet, we'll presumably learn these things as Maya encounters enemies and overcomes obstacles. Because it's easy to vomit out a sloshy bucket of character facts worthy of a deviant art OC, but true character shines through when they encounter challenges. Besides, cutting out most of the dialogue allows the reader to appreciate and fully absorb the moment. When an opening page is only one or two panels like this, it's meant to both set the scene and pull the reader into the world. Without the torturous dialogue, the reader is allowed to take in far more pieces of information. The setting seems like a high-class event, and the main character is high-class enough to attend said event. We wonder why she's there, what the party's about, and what's about to happen. After the reader has taken the time to absorb the context of the page without the distraction of empty dialogue, the ending line, and this, is actually a good page-turner to tempt the reader into reading past page page one. Remember, this is a comic, a largely visual medium. Too much dialogue, especially worthless dialogue, hinders the effects of the visuals. The key? You don't have to tell the reader what they can see on the page, unless what they see requires more information because of what they don't. Work with the visuals instead of against them. Anyway, I certainly hope some of you found this critique helpful, and I'll be back soon with another. This video is sponsored by me. Back in 2019, I started work on the comic book Dr. Alpha Miracle Child, the very first comic I ever tried to make and one I put a lot of work into. And thanks to the very generous backers, its campaign was a huge success and even earned some praise. For example, That Umbrella Guy, yes, that, That Umbrella Guy, had this to say, I've been wanting a good read with a really bad guy, and this takes the prize. There's evil, and then there's Dr. Alpha, and it was well worth the 
wait. And veteran comic book publisher Adam Post said, 10 times the story people are expecting, with depth and feeling. The relationships are meaningful and compelling. As of now, all physical copies have been sent out, with their assorted posters and other goodies. And while the physical copies are no longer available, for now, the full story of Dr. Alpha Miracle Child is currently available for download on Kindle. So, if you didn't get a chance to back the original campaign, but still interested in checking it out, you can still read the complete 112 pages of Dr. Alpha Miracle Child plus the 8-page New Kid side story by purchasing it for Amazon Kindle, especially if you want to be caught up in time for Dr. Alpha 2.